I just put that in there because this is a really early presentation. And thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you, I'm here. <laughs> so yeah, so it's been so it was it was really funny because I have done a draft presentation of this one earlier. So I was I was thinking that my slides are ready. But yesterday evening I realized that they were not ready, and I had just put something together. So then I had to I don't know. So hopefully it's a good presentation. They did it at 2 a.m. in the night, so. Hopefully it's covering everything that we need to cover. So this is me. I'm Parth Lavate. I'm an assistant team lead on the marketing team. I look after the strategic marketing. Uh, as my day job, I'm a CEO at Tegri Technologies, TechJula and App Covers. Uh, so we have a team of around 65-70 developers in back in Pune, India. And we exclusively work on Joomla. And we do everything from basic, not so much basic Joomla sites now, but it's more of enterprise Joomla applications, mobile applications and enterprise stuff. And it's been pretty interesting. So just a little bit of history about me, how I've grown and I think a lot of people in the Joomla community can grow like this. So I started uh, just out of college, we started building some static HTML sites. So I'm a mechanical engineer basically. So I have absolutely no background in web development. And uh, we were doing some things for a non-profit where we were first doing things in front page and later on we discovered something called as PHP Nuke, which was really crazy because if you have heard about PHP Nuke, you could build a dynamic, pretty dynamic site back in 2003, I think, using it. But if you wanted to install a forum, it meant that you download a zip file. It came with a text file, which told you, go to this line number 65, copy paste this code in this file, and open this file, and open that file. So you edited like 30 files, and then you got a forum. And we were doing this back then on a dial-up mode, and it was, and after that we saw Mambo. And in Mambo, you could actually install a zip file. And what we used to do for three hours of painstaking copy pasting of code suddenly became like an installer. So that, that got us hooked. And that's when we actually got onboarded as a typical do-it-yourself user. That we were doing something on our own, exploring things, no technology background. And that's when we got introduced to Joomla as a, or rather Mambo, as a typical do-it-yourself user. Later on, we moved on to become system integrators. We did some sites for people. People liked it. This was still in college. So, and by the end of college when I was actually a mechanical engineer trying to get probably would have done a job or did something else but we were finding this exciting so we said let's keep doing it it's fun and at that point we had started exploring a little bit of development so a little bit of template modifications module modifications here and there and we somehow started taking on more projects that needed us to do more development and from there we moved on to actually doing extension devs so 2009 I think we started Tech Joomla which focused on doing Joomla extensions, which people could buy and do stuff. And later on, now, I think this was, and this has been a journey of around 11 years. It's not been quick, but it has allowed us to learn a lot. It has also allowed us to explore that today, we are contributing code to the Joomla core. We are using Joomla in very, very complex applications. Uh, I would definitely recommend you, uh, Ashwin, my partner, is doing a session at 3 p.m. today. And uh, that's a uh, educational site in Ju India. And that is probably India's biggest educational application, which will reach out to 20 million children by 2020. It is funded by uh, one of biggest India's, India's biggest IT companies. And uh, that is probably a very, very, very good use case for Joomla. It's built by 50 odd people, out of which the front end is completely powered by Joomla and that's done by our team. And it's a Java stack in the back end, there's a lot of telemetry. A lot of exciting things uh, to do with education and children in general. And it's a very good use case to see that what you can achieve with Joomla. So what I'm trying to show here is that whether you are a do-it-yourself user or you want to extend Joomla and take its boundaries outside, you can actually do it. And the more, so you'll see that this balloon grows. It also means that our learning capacity has grown. We started out really small, doing really small websites. And we are now doing really, really large web applications. And everybody who is in this space, with a little bit of uh, perseverance, I would say, will be able to, you know, really scale their business on a huge level. Joomla has the capacity to let you do that. So what we're going to explore in this is that the, the reason why I'm giving this background is that I'm gonna, what I'm going to propose in this presentation talks about extending Joomla and talks about doing more things with Joomla. Uh, but typically Joomla has been seen as something that is used by these guys. This is the do-it-yourself users. And when WordPress came, they took away all these users because WordPress is way more simpler and let's see why that happened. And we also need to explore who, who are the users we really want. 
and that's what we want to do in this presentation. So let's first go really back. Let's go back to 1999, 2001, 2002. How was the internet back then? I think a lot of you guys must have been using the internet back then. What were you doing in 1999? News. News. All right. What about you? Uh, ICQ. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so that was just starting, right? The internet was just coming up. And the people on the internet then, what do you think they were like? What, how would you define the users that came on the internet in 1999, 2000, even till 2003, 2000? They were geeks. They were geeks. Explorers. They were explorers. They were really mm -hmm. trying to experiment and connecting to the internet and what it did. It was just the start, right? And this is how much it has grown. So you go back to 2003, we are only this much, and that's where we are right now. We have people in India, China, Africa, so much of the world is coming online. But you have to realize that the people who are coming on the internet today are very different than the people who came on the internet in 2004. People are coming today expecting ready things that they can use. They are not coming to tinker with things, they are not coming to build things. At least not most of them are. At least that's what I think. So that's cool, right? It means more users for Joomla. If it's grown so many times, why is Joomla still at 3.3%? It's great that we are still at 3.3%, which is not bad. But the internet has grown I don't know how many times. But we need to see what does it mean for something like this. So let's look at the market dynamics. Today it's much easier to connect to the internet. You don't have to connect via a dial-up modem that does a lot of noises and after that gives you a connection that barely works. Today almost everybody has a connection on their phone. The volume of technical, non-savvy people coming on the internet is much, much, much higher. Today, your granny is on the internet, right? No. No? Not yours, maybe. <laughs> so, the whole point is that the people coming on the internet today have very, very different expectations. And we need to see that, can we meet those expectations on our own, or do we need some help? So, this is of course a, what I think graph. Probably this is how the chart looked in 2003. The builders were much bigger, people, the tinkerers, the geeks. The volume of them coming on the internet was much higher back in 2004 than it is now. So what is the impact on CMS? So systems that are closer to end users are most probably likely to see more user growth. Because people will expect things that are ready, so that is what we do. So today if somebody comes and says, you know, I think I want a website, I say go build a Facebook page, do you really need a website? Because a lot of people, that, that time has gone where people were building websites just because they wanted something printed on their card. They want something that works now. They want something that actually gets to business. And a lot of, for a lot of these people, maybe a Facebook page works, maybe Wix works, maybe they don't, don't need something as complex as Julia. Or maybe on a static HTML side. And if you go and find people today, that's what they'll do first. They'll try things and then they might realize that, okay, now I need something more complex. Now let me go find a web developer and do it. So what does this mean for Joomla? Which are the users that we want? Do we want these end users that are just coming on the internet? Or do we want the geeks? Can we have, can we have both? Is it possible? Maybe. Let's see. What do you think of it? Do you want both? No, I, I don't think so. You don't want both? We have not the results to serve both. Okay. That's my opinion. So let's look at what WordPress does well. And I, what I think is for any product, purpose and clear purpose is extremely important. It needs a vision and loyalty to that vision to make things really work well. So the way I've seen WordPress is WordPress is very, very end user first. It was built as a blogging tool. It's very easy to use. Yes, they are exploring their boundaries towards applications and websites now, but they have not lost their core loyalty. They don't do ever do migrations. There is no MVC. They have to so much technical debt that they'll be paying off that for years. They say that we don't care if our code is old. We only care if our users don't have to migrate. We care that our users don't have to do anything. They just should get a site that works. 
and that's their loyalty. They will not do anything that will turn away any of these users. And they are doing that because their purpose is clear. Do you think the developers at WordPress don't want to innovate? Do you think they don't want to do the latest things? They do, but they are doing it in a way that does not affect end users. So if you heard about Calypso or what they did with WordPress.com, you know what happened with WordPress.com around probably a year back or a half years back. You know what happened? So what they did is they built WordPress.com as almost a progressive web app. So they first introduced web services in WordPress and WordPress.com, the backend that manages I don't know, maybe 17% of that 28% of the sites that run WordPress, the sites that run automatically, by automatic, are run off a progressive backend that runs with web services. Which means that they have abstracted their backend, the thing that users use, from their code. And what has the entire tech community been cursing WordPress about? For years, they've been cursing them about technical debt. They've been cursing them that their code sucks, it does. There's no MVC, it's not easy to manage, it's just crazy. Any developer who is worth his work, you know, anything that he says, is not going to say that, you know, WordPress is good code. But by doing this abstraction, by disconnecting the interface that users use and the code, what they have done is that tomorrow, without disturbing this end user interface, they can actually switch out their old code, switch in new code. The new code would be Ruby, .NET, whatever. And the users won't know anything. It won't matter. Now this is possible to do in something like WordPress.com which is like a cloud application practically. Which does use WordPress.org but it is a cloud application. Doing the same thing in WordPress.org which has a lot of extensions and a lot of things is not going to be easy. Because when you say that all extension developers have to have web services, that's not going to happen easily. It will be a challenge but you will see that even this they have done with the purpose of not disturbing their end users. They'll figure something out I'm sure. So that's where WordPress is. They will not do anything to turn away the users that they have. They won't displease them. Drupal on the other hand is on the other side of the market. It's very very agencies first. They do everything to keep their agencies happy. Right? And I think I was talking to Sarah Watts yesterday and she gave me an interesting angle on how things work in Sweden. And there Drupal or Joomla is not very popular. It's other CMSs that are popular. But when Drupal came on board, what she said was, that it was trying to take away a lot of people from the enterprise customers. And the agencies that used to do all this work obviously were okay using Drupal as long as it did not cost them money, as long as they could build the same. So you see Drupal is extremely modular, extremely flexible. But it means that if I build a Drupal website and give it to Marco to take over, Marco will probably say, I don't know what this guy's done. Because you, it's so flexible, you can do absolutely anything with it in any way you want. There is no defined structure. At least that's how it was in 7. I haven't explored 8 that much. But at least in 7, that's how it was. And which meant, there will be always migrations. They are now trying, at least in Dry's latest presentation, he says that, you know, after 8, we are not doing migrations. Or there will be easy upgrades. But by doing migrations forever, it means that their agency will always be able to charge the companies that they work with a hefty amount for an upgrade. Which also means that the companies that get Drupal have deep pockets. They have to be able to afford an upgrade every 3 or 4 years. Most probably they also understand that technical debt is not good. It has to be taken care of some time. So they also understand that this has to be done. So these are more mature users who understand how technology works. You can't keep using technology that's 10 years old. It is going to catch up to you. So that's how Drupal is. Always reducing technical debt. From 7 to 8 they said let's just scratch from scratch. That was a big decision. I don't know where it will get them. But they are at least doing that with a vision in mind. Which means that even if they do suffer from it, they will still make sure that whoever their end users are, they will make sure that they, they are satisfied. Let's look at Joomla. Who is Joomla for? What is Joomla's vision? Who first? What do you think? The future. Oh, let's just talk about now. <coughs> uh, we have not new direction. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <coughs> we have, I think, talked about the direction for the first time. But yeah, that's a good, definitely a good thing to happen. But what is your perception? Who is Joomla for? What is Joomla loyal to? Joomla is preferred for Joomla. Yeah, that's exactly it. 
and I think um, who was I talking to the other day? We were talking about why does somebody who has done Joomla for so long find it so hard to go to Drupal? You start, you start your learning curve all over again. Uh huh. Pardon me? You start your learning curve all over again. Is it really? You that? don't know any trust. Why, why are we so lazy? <laughs> we are so lazy. Everybody is. I mean, the same thing about Drupal. Or the same thing about WordPress, you go to a hardcore Drupal guy and tell him, you know, Joomla is so fucking awesome. He's not going to move. There's an extreme amount of inertia in moving from something to something. I was trying to make a case of why Joomla should be used for enterprise and somebody was telling me that, hey, you can do it in Laravel. I said, I know, but I know Joomla. If I get a project today, I'm going to do it in Joomla. I'm not going to take the pain of telling my 65 guys to learn Laravel now to do something. Unless it's like completely impossible to do it. And this inertia exists in all these communities. We have these, like, like Anibal said, Joomla is for Joomlers. And these Joomlers are so passionate about this that they'll try and use it as far as possible. There are people who will try other things, explore, but they are keep still coming back. And those people are the people who haven't moved from those 1.0s to 1.5s to 2.5s to 3.0. Most of them we still have. The people who are not that loyal, who are probably more business focused, might have gone the WordPress route or the uh, Drupal route. But most of the real Joomla's are still stuck around. I don't know if that's a logical decision though. It's probably a decision of the heart or it's laziness, whatever. But the whole point is that we still need to define, we need to get more of these Joomla's. If these are so sticky and they won't let Joomla go, if we have more of them, it does mean that we have a way better way to survive. How many of you guys have Joomla based businesses? Okay, so it does make sense for Joomla for surviving, right? So we need to give it a bright future so that we get a bright future. So we need a purpose and the purpose can be a tool for project alignment. You must have heard about fights in the community, PRs not getting merged and people fighting over features and everything, which is fine, that happens in any open source community. You go a little bit deeper into Drupal or WordPress, you'll see the same thing. Drupal and WordPress, because they have their dictators, they probably have a different way of handling things, but they still do have problems. But because they have a purpose, I think the simple thing to do is, we simply need to find out who are we loyal to, what is our target use, what is our purpose. And basically anything that we want to do, we need to ask ourselves the question, how does this help our end user? And of course, it comes to the point who our end user is, and that's what we are going to try and address. So this is a, something we made. A little while back. So I'm going to try and explain how Joomla is positioned, how Drupal is positioned, how WordPress is positioned, how Swix. Can you can you make out? You have a laser pointer, I think. Yeah, yes, I was offering that. Oh yeah. Oh, that is then you said no, you don't want that. So no. I thought it was a clicker. It's like with Uber now; it's double the price. I want it. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. So what I've done here is that uh, we have positioned the end user here. This is the end consumer. This is the true end consumer. It is who buys products on Amazon, who uses Facebook, that's the end consumer. On this side, we have the pro geek programmer. Yeah. And what I'm trying to do is, I've tried to position all these products on these lines and try to map them based on various para parameters. So let's look at Facebook. It's SaaS. Cost of acquisition, you will see that this is a line of cost for acquisition. It's zero for the user, unless he does advertising. Nothing to get on board, make a free Facebook page. Maybe start doing a little advertising, pay as you go, no upfront investment. Quick to start. Next is Wix. Again, probably free to start or for a very small monthly fee. Then you can get something up very quickly. Now let's not look at this Joomla distro bit yet. Let's look at WordPress.com. WordPress.com is getting hit with the likes of Facebook pages and Wix. They are the most hit because they are the closest to this market. You have to get over learning Facebook and Wix to start using WordPress.com. And after that, I look at what I call as WordPress Basic. That is followed by Joomla the CMS, then WordPress Advanced and going on here. So this is cost of acquisition. You'll see that it keeps going high as you go towards a more bespoke system. Of course, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you imagine you're trying to build an application that could be built in everything then this is going to be true. If you build a very small application in Laravel, it won't be very 
expensive obviously. So now let's look at the second line. So you have cost of acquisition, you also have flexibility. You see that as things become more specific, they have a very 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 clear purpose. They are also very very simple to use. So you will see that your expectation of simplicity is going to be very, you expect things to be very simple. So somebody using Facebook pages, if you ask them to put a HTML code piece there, they are not going to like that. They will expect things to be super simple. Whereas if you go and tell a Laravel guy that I will give you drag and drop, he will say whatever. I don't care. Don't give me that, in fact. So, just like we have expectation of simplicity, you will see that the level of expertise also goes up. You need to be a real expert to do things here. Here you don't need anything, any special expertise. Just, you just know how to use the internet, you will be able to use it. But what happens is that the flexibility is very low. You can only do certain amount of things with the Facebook page. If you go and tell them I want this page that does something special, probably not possible in Facebook, maybe you can go to Wix. You want something more, go to wordpress.com. Maybe you want something even more, you want to change your domain, get more control, go up this ladder and you will get your flexibility. But this flexibility does come at a cost. It's not free. So what Why can I have the level of that, uh, flexibility of Drupal set so narrow in the span? It's not. It's here. Yeah, it's set narrow. It's not as anywhere near as, as high reaching or low reaching as the others. And I would consider it to be one of the more flexible ones. It is, it is. So, uh, so actually what I'm trying to do here is that this is not flexible. This is very flexible. So it, right, but you made it shorter than so it was around no, the box. because of the name. The the name. name. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because of the oh you oh these oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh these buildings oh, don't the mean anything. Oh. You, you the height doesn't tall. mean anything. Okay. It's just this graph. That's it. So the way I see it is that I see Joomla the platform. When I say the platform, I talk about everything that Joomla offers. Just the user management, ACL, categories, all the horizontals. It's as flexible as Drupal. You can do everything with it. But yes, you do need to know what you're doing. What we have also, so this is something I argued a lot with George about. So basically, now Joomla can be used in a very, very advanced way. So you can go and stretch it as much as Drupal or even more probably, or as much as any framework. Similarly, WordPress can also be stretched. So if you go to WordPress's website right now, they talk about a great tool for building blogs, websites, and apps. WordPress has the audacity to say that build apps with it. Yes, you can. But what will happen to the code? and how you will manage that code, it's going to get a mess. So basically, that's why I'm calling WordPress advanced. So, and this is exactly what the PLD, uh, not the PLD now, the, what is it, the board? The board. is trying to position Joomla in, which is for website builders. So if you want to build a complex website, then a complex website is much easier to manage, build, and scale in Joomla compared to WordPress. So WordPress this this side of things really well. You can do this. But it's just not as scalable, as easy to manage. Comparatively, Joomla is easier to manage on that scale. Imagine having 20, 25 components in Joomla and the ability to you know, manage it that you get even in the backend. Compared to that, the WordPress backend becomes a mess at that scale. Don't even, let's not even talk about the code and what code goes in templates and how that is managed and how that's created. So the whole point of this is that what I'm trying to show is that we have the ability to go here, but should we is something we need to decide. We are definitely great here. We should get our developers to go more towards this. That's what I personally feel. Because if you do that, you can get more money. Effectively. You can scale your business better. There is a dearth of good Joomla developers out there. And what I think what happened after 1.5 is people who were not serious about Joomla went to WordPress. They were not ready to do the more complicated coding. I think it's great. Because it's like sending your bad coders to your... I won't say they're bad, bad, but... It's like, you know, sending your bad customers to WordPress, send over, good, you don't have good people, send them to WordPress. So, effectively, it actually enriches your market. It makes you, you have a chance to become an expert. And you can decide whether you want to become an expert in this area or go to this area. But you will have the capability to make much more money, make Joomla much more sustainable, donate more back to Joomla, give more time back to Joomla, make it way better than it is. So, this is about positioning Joomla and now let's see, if we do want to get here, what do we have to do? So this is what I call Joomla's market. So this is your community, you have your translators, trainers, marketers, your designers. Yes? Yeah, just want to hook into your previous slide. Sure. What I feel I'm struggling with at times is that if 
you're talking about your customers, the ones that still have your 1.5 or 1 point or 2.5 sites, yeah. um, and they have to upgrade to three, or you have new customers, the discussion. Well, I would always say there is no discussion because people have heard about this thing called WordPress, Plus, and that's what they want. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter if you try and argue stuff or yeah. give pros and cons, matter. and not even yeah. bashing one or the other. But it's it's a non-discussion. Uh, so yeah. that's why we're happy. Oof, is in the room, is he now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that hopefully that we finally can get something going on the marketing side. Yeah. Which but we, in we at least position Joomla as a viable alternative. Now it's yeah. not. It's just dismissed out of the box. Yeah. Because it's not WordPress. Absolutely. And that, that, uh, struggling with that. I agree uh, with that. I mean that is going to be a problem. But again, as I said. If you look at Drupal, for example, mm -hmm. it doesn't have a huge market share, but it probably has the best market share. The yeah, but Drupal is the market. same thing. It's it's like if you go to a governmental organization, uh, they'll just shout Drupal for whatever reason. Absolutely. And, and so then, that's that's purely marketing. What I'm saying is yeah. that once we position, it will be clear who the market. Yeah, right? I'm and just saying just I'm find... struggling with that and uh, all the nice charts and then. Yeah. And, and, Cognitive, whatever, do that, so Absolutely. build up. But I'm don't help is that we are trying to throw arrows in every direction. We don't have the resources to throw arrows in every direction. We need to make it clear who we want to send a message to. Mm -hmm. Once we do that, we'll at least see some traction. Right now, we are throwing everything at everybody. And it only sticks on jewelers. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. So, we need to have a way in which we can actually reach out to the right audience. Yeah. But I have the completely opposite. Um, Thing I see, I never face this problem that I have a client that said to me, um, WordPress or Joomla. I am not. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I have yeah, so actually, you know what? I mean, I'll tell you my personal yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have branded ourselves as a Joomla company, we get a lot of Joomla companies coming to us. We have less people. So see, you know who will face this problem. So if you are trying and going and selling a site in the open market, where I have a friend who said WordPress was great, or I have a friend who said Google was great because of all the marketing. That's where this challenge is faced. And if your client trusts you, he will listen to you, but you will have to make a hard sell. So if you remember what uh, George, uh, this is this guy from Greece who was talking about the same thing in yesterday's Make It Happen session. So he gets this problem that if he puts a board on his door which says a Joomla development agency, he probably won't have any build coming. But if it says web development agency, he'll probably have people coming and saying, I'm on WordPress, then you'll have to convince them, don't take WordPress, take Joomla. And it'll work. But where I think, see, this is very, very true that WordPress and Drupal have a great, great, great perception in the market that we have to fight against. If all these, you know, all of us Joomlers go and convince somebody, they can probably convince some people, but they are, these people are not coming with the right frame in mind. They're coming with the perception that WordPress is better or Drupal is better. So what Mark, the point Marco is trying to make is simply this, that we need to work on improving that perception so that people at least weigh them in the same, you know, they don't come into a jury trial room uh, all convinced that they are not going to, you know, take on Joomla. That's the, and that's a pure marketing thing. It is something that we have to fix. But I see some success in this area because I have a really big client now. They consider to change from Tipo Tree to Joomla because of the benefits. Yeah. Um, they are not too complex and they are not too hobbyist. We are a system integrator in yeah. advanced way. Because right. of that, they consider to use Joomla. Absolutely. So, to in to fact, reduce my experience cost. personally has been that we always are able to convince Word Drupal clients to Joomla. Yes. WordPress, a lot of times I just don't try. I'm like, okay, you don't want WordPress? This site, right? I don't want to do it because it's not fun anyway. So, sure. But that depends. I mean, you what you want to do, right? If you're on the market where you're building small websites, there, and if you do want to compete with WordPress, then yes, that is a you know hard task, and marketing will need to work a lot to improve that perception. At least get rid of the negative perception. I mean, if not uh, saying that Joomla is better than WordPress, we don't want to do that. But we definitely want to put Joomla in the right light. And Joomla is a much more powerful tool if you're building sites above a certain competency. Below that, a lot of times I'm seriously compelled to say that, okay, we won't do it for you. A, because the ticket size is low. And B, once we take on that WordPress task, we're going to maintain it for the client. And those kind of clients are something that I personally don't want, but we do have a lot of people in the community who are offering this and are competing day on day with Joomla and WordPress. So we do need to make sure that Joomla is seen as a better website building tool than WordPress. So that is 
completely agree about. That's something we have to work on. But one of the key things to do that is making sure that we know who to market to. Once we know that, then I think at least all the resources we have will be concentrated in that one direction, making us much more effective. So this is what I believe is our target market. So this is your community. This I I split this into two parts. I like to split the Joomla system into the core platform, the CMS being our core core distribution, like uh, Duke was saying yesterday, and the product offering. This is the product offering that we have. This whole thing, not just the Joomla platform, not just the CMS, extension templates, the hosting and cloud services. All of this makes the offering that we go out to. In fact, it's very hard to market Joomla without extensions. For example, if I don't talk about e-commerce extensions. What can Joomla do? Joomla can't can't do anything out of the box. It's built to be a platform that can be scaled with extensions. Or then you have to have the expertise to write your own extensions. So you have to pitch this whole thing. And these are the guys who help us take us there. So we don't go to these guys directly. We have been trying that lately. This is what WordPress does. If we do this, we're gonna fail. Because Joomla is a side tool that uses these guys. I mean, that's these guys use to take our you know, take it to the end users. So we have to work with extension developers, system integrator, consulting agencies, template developers to make sure that we empower them to take Joomla to the masses. And that's our way to get to these guys. If you go and say to you know your baker or your shop around the world that you should build your site in Joomla, ah, uh, doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thinking about like the brown block. Yeah. Uh, in the next version, I would. Uh, yeah, well, this is a bit more explicit about the fact, like what Ufuk's doing now, he's listing uh, the advantages of Joomla uh, 3.7. So I think that for me, at least part of the uh, attractiveness of Joomla comes from the fact that uh, a few key features yeah. are actually part of the core. The reason yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I initially got engaged more into Joomla is when they started supporting multilingual. So so, absolutely. So, absolutely. So, yeah, saying oh, yeah, so Joomla you know, is nothing without extensions. I don't say it's nothing. No, no, what no, I'm saying so is that, you know, I mean, all I'm saying is that the marketing message needs to be all of that together, otherwise you're not using your strengths. Yeah, but because that's true. Because we have made that mistake in the past, core is great, and all that, but that's when true. you pitch, it doesn't make sense. I mean, it's not like as an organization, but when key people start saying that, mm -hmm. the message goes that, you know, of course everybody wants to use most of core and as less extensions as possible, because yeah. it's logical and sensible to manage. But as a marketing message, we need to talk about everything we have. No, no, and take that no that's a combination. So uh, I, In I'm fact, I actually had ecstatic about yeah. the fact that we now have fields. Yeah. I was very early advocate yeah. for that. And that will make my life in so, so, many, many, easier. Easier. Yeah. so many things more easy. And yes, it's limited, this, that, and the other. But it will but improve. It will improve. Yeah, but that basis plus the extensions, that's what makes it great. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, in fact, I also had one more piece in here that was the framework, but I have removed that to keep the presentation simple really yeah. because it actually attracts different types of people depending on how you do it. So these are the people that help us go to market. It's the extension devs, template clubs, cloud services, hosting companies, system integrators and developer consultants. So well, it's they help you go to market. They're not doing co-branded promotion or hosting companies do. Cloud services hosting. do. So for example if you go to Watchfully or my Joomla or whatever. So you'll see that there is a both side piggyback, right? So they don't piggyback on a service that, that is picking up somebody that's in the Joomla community to partner with them. No, we are not, but, but we should, is what I'm saying. House. I'm saying we should. What I'm saying okay. is that, yeah, so these are the guys that we need to focus on and help these guys empower us. So I found, for example, Joomla because it was a logo on a C panel. There were a lot of logos. I installed all of them. I found this was nice. Mambo, of course, back then. So this, I think, is a very good way for people to discover Joomla. But now what has happened is, back then everything was equal. Now WordPress is bigger, so WordPress comes on the front page. For Joomla, you have to do two clicks to get to the point where you see them. So, so basically, <coughs> you're using the credibility of these people yeah. to help market. Yeah. yeah. So if you, for yeah. example, look at extension devs, let's say, let's take John Social or Easy Social for an example. So now we got this biggest project that I was talking about because they thought that Joomla was great for building community websites. I don't know where they got that perception from. We don't say it. But most of, a lot of people in the market and a lot of these surveys say that it's great for building community sites. Oh yeah, but with that, with those extensions. 
so i am happy if these guys do a lot of promotion of their product so that those people use joomla we are getting a lot of people on our lms product now which don't know joomla but they are coming because they like the product which is fine because everybody who ends up does use and end, end up using joomla and if these guys earn money and these guys earn money everybody earns money doing it and it's actually sustainable it makes the whole thing work so i believe that these are the people we should empower to make sure that we can market joomla better. so this is what uh, so this is just i'm splitting the parts so this is what i believe is the joomla platform so if you are a enterprise developer who has done drupal and want to get them on board these are the things that will help you give you the infrastructure to create scalable projects these are what in joomla x are horizontals i believe we should have more of these we need to Pardon me? I was saying, I was saying, where is the framework in that? Oh, the framework is part of this actually. So I haven't split it because framework means a we are not very powerful as a framework. It's not a competitive advantage for us. But yes, if you are a Joomla developer doing things with it, the framework can help you build a lot of things. And we have done like really crazy things with it, including a IoT based lighting control management system that we talked about in the past that uses framework for APIs. But again, a lot of people can argue why did you use that? because you could do it with a lot of other things but then again as i said we knew that so we used that so user management access control versioning menu management category stacks languages fields routers web service and a lot of more things that will come this means that if i am building a new product i get this out of the box i just have to integrate this if i am doing e-commerce i should not be doing my own acl or my own categories of course we need to improve these to a level that allows other extension developers to use this the more fragmentation that happens in this area downstream it's actually problematic so i believe that as a platform we should focus on making this really really rock solid if we do that then we ensure that more people rely on this for their own uh, requirements so when i say the cms as a distribution that's the whole thing it's joomla itself all the com content all the specific extensions that we have that's our core distribution so to say And then we need to see if we can extend the stack wide distributions. Yeah. So the idea behind this is that we talked about end users, right? What does the end user search for? Let's any SEO guys here? Yeah. Yeah, uh, this strikes a chord with me, and because of the reason that in the discussions I have with customers considering WordPress. So in WordPress, when you get a template, <coughs> that's basically what here is a distribution. Yeah. You get the framework, you get your blogging stuff. You don't need to install something else. Yeah. And they face it as one. Yeah. Uh, if we talk about a template, it's the skinning, and then uh, if they install that skin, then they get disappointed because yeah. their site doesn't look anything like that uh, yeah. template uh, with uh, nice uh, promotional images, and then they have to add whatever blogging, exactly. like e-commerce, or something. So, yeah, I think this will be a very strong point yeah. if we somehow could address this in yeah. building. So the way I'm looking at this is that I believe. I mean, we are already strapped in terms of volunteer time to even build our own CMS and platform. But we should promote other people to do this. What this means is that, see, one more very critical thing is that when you are, so let's say I am creating an e-commerce distribution, and when I say a distribution, I am suddenly going right out there in front of those end users. So if you go back here, now I become like a Facebook or a Wix, because now I am positioning myself here. So if you look at our Joomla distributions. If I build some tool that lets me do, let's say, basic accounting, or something really simple, which anybody can use, I'm suddenly up here. Which means that I have to do my own marketing, I have to do my own positioning. I do not think these distributions should be called Joomla because that will confuse a lot of people. They should be called whatever they want, but it should use Joomla inside. If it does, those users that come to those distributions are at the end of the day Joomla users, but they came for a specific purpose. And when I do something here, so see, there is an inherent problem in creating distributions here, because for example, let's say let's just look at the backend template. If I want to do an e-commerce site, my backend template needs to look and feel as if it's an e-commerce site. It should help a user who is doing e-commerce. It should tell me what my past orders were, what is the next thing I have to do, what are the trends, and a lot of statistics and data and all the action items have to be built for e-commerce. So basically, my UX can be much better if I'm down here. But this has to be done by somebody. Most probably, if we can empower third-party developers to do this, that everybody. So let's say I'll give an example. So we have a. So we have JGib, right? So that was talking to you about it. 
So today what we have is we have Joomla guys who want donation management and non-profits and people buying this extension. But these are either companies like you guys who buy it or it is a hobbyist in some non-profit who wants to do it. But if it was actually a non-tech guy that came in and said launch site, they can't do that. So if I do this, what I can do is that my market, which is right now restricted to 3% of the internet, can suddenly go to the rest of it. Because now I'm addressing a very, very, very specific problem. I can go and say that you want a website for non-profits that does donation management, online donations, donor CRM, you got it. Mm. And the best part is, I'm not doing any extra code for it. It's the same code that goes to my extensions. I'll probably skin it in a different way. Position it in a different way. It's very cheap for me to do it. Yes, I'll have to spend a lot of money on marketing it and going out there and saying, because right now I have a huge advantage. I do any extension, people in Joomla know us, they buy it. But yeah, I'll have, when I go out there, there is something I need to do to make sure that I become known. And if I get on 10,000 users, they are users that are actually using Joomla. And they don't need to know it's Joomla. They don't care because these guys really don't care. They just care about what solution you're offering. And you today, as system integrators, when you build a website for a client, when you go out to their users, that's exactly what they're getting, right? Somebody who is coming on an e-commerce website that you built out Joomla, they don't know it's Joomla. They're just buying something from the local store. So things like this, if you could use Joomla as the backend, and we have actually done this. We have a cloud product out there right now, which is around 250,000 users, serving 250,000 end users, which uses Joomla as the backend. And it's a cloud service that's being used by three major enterprises in the world right now. It's possible. But it's a lot of work because we have to market it like crazy. Nobody knows us in that market. So, obviously, but it's a big, big, big new opportunity for us without investing something different in code. It's the same code leveraged in a different market in a different way. So, coming back to this, I believe that this is the next big opportunity. We have, I don't know how many, 80 different categories on the extension directory. All those huge opportunities, which can be creating tools that people can use as end users. Those end users are anyways never going to come to you. But with this, we can go out to that. Most probably they won't go to WordPress either, remember. <coughs> so let's just look at the example. So we have to add some context and relevance. So as we go more focus, we will add more value. So, just like there is a Joomla framework, there is platform inside it, CMS outside it, this layer on top that makes it relevant to an end user with a specific problem. So typically I think, uh, who mentioned his mother searching for weather every day? I think it was in the keynote, right? Uh, we were talking about Alexa and voice applications. Uh, was that? Guy in the kill. Oh, guy in the kill, yeah. So if you look at that, that's where we are going and that's what's going to happen. But if this skin on top lets you do that, then this could be addressing something like Alexa, it could be addressing a web interface, it could be addressing a bank kiosk, <coughs> it could be anything. Or it could be solving a specific problem like letting people create their e-commerce website or a small blog or whatever kind of thing. So if you want ideas, just go and find the extension directory. We already have the ideas out there. Every major extension, if the top 100 developers in Joomla can create top 100 distributions which are not marketed as Joomla because they have zero market advantage calling it Joomla, you have your next wave of users. Te template companies sometimes try and do that in, yeah. in um, a sort of fragmented way. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. main problem there that they do is they try to sell it again to the Joomla users. What I'm saying is that you don't need to sell it to the Joomla users. Go out there and sell it to the market. And the other day, I, I, know, I think that we were talking about the Symphony 4. That in Symphony 4, they are introducing uh, recipes. Yeah. So they're trying to create. Uh, no. That's exactly what it is, right? Yeah. So a lot of people are going that route. We are just making it easy for people to do this. We have a great, I mean, if you look at all the developers that we have on the JET, it's such a great team that can actually help us get out there. We just need to support them to do something like this and make sure that our infrastructure is rock solid for them to rely on something. So all the startups right now that are creating different, different, different products for users on the web, they will want to start somewhere. If they see this as a viable alternative to start, and maybe if they are not a Joomla extension developer, they'll go with Laravel or something else. 
But if they are a Joomla extension developer, if they want to do something like this, this is the easiest for them to do. I might, it might not be technologically the best, but it is definitely easy to start. Get something out there. Maybe they'll change later. But this is a great way for them to reach the end market, which is much wider, much bigger. And with that, your three percent is going to grow. So this is what we talked about distributions. They have to be use case driven. So you'll see that I'm talking about the Joomla as a Joomla market here. So this is for people who know Joomla. We are selling Joomla as Joomla. I'm talking about creating a different market here, which is a Joomla as something else market. It doesn't have to be called Joomla. It doesn't matter for us here as long as those users end up using Joomla. Our problem is solved. So let's look at the avatars of Joomla itself. So Joomla, the main application development platform, I believe this is a great uh, thing to compete with Drupal on. Joomla, the CMS site builder, our core distro. This is what we are focusing on now, marketing this to the right website builders. These are our audience now. So that's something that has come out out of the board meetings that we should be focusing very, very much on website builders. These are the guys. And Joomla based SaaS for distributions. This should be the next market to go to. So, a quick note on what we can do now to support this ecosystem. This is something that marketing is already working on. So, we need to encourage individual contribution, maybe something like this on the volunteer portal. So this is something that I've picked up from Drupal. Drupal is trying to do this now. Where, you know, uh, if you are an employee somewhere and you're doing contributions, then the volunteer portal becomes like a LinkedIn open source profile, which talks about the contributions you have, how many forum posts, how many get contributions, how many pull requests, what teams are you part of. This will really get people to start doing things. This is a great upgrade for the volunteer portal coming ahead. I'm hoping it will be able. That's what I'm proposing. But uh, also doing that when you do your certificate, they give you a yeah, profile. Yeah, that does go there. Yeah. So now what is very important is that on one side we are now saying we want to go to agencies, we want to go to companies. We need to encourage agency based contributions. Right now Joomla is very very individual centric. And the reason probably is I was talking to a lot of people why, uh, I mean in India we have companies that are pretty big. Anything about you know 15-20 people is then you are actually, people say that okay you are doing something. If it's under that it's like okay you must be doing some time pass. That's how it is. But. Uh, because that's probably how the culture is or how the laws are because I was just talking to somebody, some people in Europe and they were saying it's really hard to grow a company. The employment laws are horrible. I mean, employing a lot of people is not easy. So, I don't know if it is by virtue of that, but generally in Joomla, you have to contribute as an individual. So, if my company wants to contribute developer time, it's not easy to get recognition for that. We are trying to change that now. That's something else that has come out of the board that we will be encouraging more agencies to contribute. And we have done this in the past. If you have seen uh, pizza and bugs, there have been scenarios where people have contributed 200, 400 hours of time. It's very hard to make it effective, of course, but if you can encourage this, that would be great. So, so this is what Drupal had on its... Uh, so Drupal had a state of Drupal presentation. They do uh, Drys does it uh, every few months. And this was in the India presentation. These are the companies in India that are contributing. And these are the number of commits they have as a company to the core. This is an example of an enterprise contributing to Joomla. They get their own company profile with how many people have contributed what. So it's just a collation of the volunteer profiles collated by company. So this is another nice way to encourage companies to get some recognition for the contributions. So this can also go on the resources directly showcase with contribution credentials. And that was one of the thought process of doing when the resource directory was made. <coughs> so this is the next thing. Uh, so distributions are something in the future. So we in marketing right now are trying to do extension driven marketing. So we can't go and say use Redshop for example, but we can say go use e-commerce and this is the extension category. So we are going to try and do extension category based marketing. So Joomla for e-commerce, Joomla for internet, Joomla for non-profits. Same thing as distributions, just but just a quick start. How to build your own distribution using the right extension. So that people at least start seeing it in their mind that hey Joomla can do that. So just uh, igniting that spark that it's required. And it's like a problem to solution approach. So you're talking about doing like a like template clubs do, they do a quick yeah. start? Yeah. Talk, so we won't be able to do that as Joomla, no. but we will be able to at least do some use case case studies or do some magazine articles around it. 
So we don't have a lot of time, but this is a separate presentation that I typically do. I'll share a content. I'll share a slide share. So this is how we work in our company. This is what we call the spirit of open source, the way to actually build things. So everything we build is built in such a way that we try and contribute somewhere in the stack. It means that we either build new products, we build new libraries that we contribute in open source, we contribute back to Joomla. If you can design your development in such a way, you'll be able to contribute more. And the agencies that are using Joomla, if they can do that, we'll get more developers contributing to the Because that's one more problem that we have, that we don't have enough people contributing back. We do have a lot, but we still could do with more. So this is a pretty bigger, pretty big presentation that I do normally separately. So I want to talk about that. But this is a key thing in whatever I'm saying earlier to make it work. For example, if I'm doing a downstream distribution, and in doing that, if I create a horizontal component like fields, like Alon did, that should be contributed to the core. If you do it, you're strengthening the core in a big way. So distributions, as I said, this will empower extension developers, consultants, everybody will be able to. So because everybody who is doing custom development on Joomla today will also be able to do custom development on these distributions. It's the same knowledge. You can do value added services like monitoring, security, hosting, backup, maybe while JED. So maybe getting those guys to be promoted as well. Volunteer onboarding contribution. So this is something else that we need to work on because one of the key problems we face right now is a lot of people want to volunteer, but we don't have like a task file that people can quickly pick up and do things. So this is something else that could probably go on the volunteer portal. And that's it. So next steps, we want to work with the resources directory to see if we can do some things that we talked about. Define extension level marketing strategies. Define rules for the distribution ecosystem and promote it. So this is something that we might not do immediately, but I think we should in the future. It's something I'm discussing with people in the board and it'll take some time for everybody to see. Yeah, average time is two years is what Kukuk <laughs> is saying. <laughs> so, and then drive value for all of these personas. So you can look at, uh, I'll share this presentation. We have a list of 2017 goals for the Joomla marketing team that we can look at. If you want to read a huge novel and if you're not too bored in this presentation, if you want to look at how this was all derived, uh, I have a link at it, uh, on the first slide that you can go to read my detailed blog about this topic. It's there somewhere. Yeah, here. It should help you understand all the perspectives. And that's about it. I think we are anyways out of time. So unless you have any questions, we can roll it up. Who, who's, going to, who's going to be the expert to be the distribution? Extension developers, I believe. Yeah, but for example, there are already Joomla distribution, for example, uh, the learning management system, but there are some providers of this CMS yeah. customized for learning management system to compete with Moodle. They are, they are. So, so as I said, that's the problem of the extension developer. So we are facing that problem. So I was showing uh, him what we have built so it does have its own challenges but that's not Joomla's problem I want to go into that market and do something there I have a Joomla extension that does it how to market it there how to compete there that's but I definitely know that if I want to open this up and get your help in customizing that or taking it to your local clients you will be my best partners because I know you already know Joomla so what I'm saying is that this ecosystem is extremely powerful all of us here as partners can do so much more if we position ourselves right in the right markets. So to answer your question, uh, an extension developer who has already done that in the Joomla market is the best person to do it from a technical perspective. Because I believe I've always used Joomla as my beta testing market. So I create an extension. I know when I'm taking an extension, people are using it as an extension. It's a piece to build something else. They're not expecting some finished product like an end user system. I get feedback from their ad better my product and that betterment also goes into my Joomla offering. It's just a different position. And the developer can create a distribution and sell it in the marketplace. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. <coughs> I would like to share with you some sure. of my thoughts. Uh, perfect dashboards where we have many clients <coughs> with uh, Joomla and the biggest problem for them is to upgrade from one version to another because uh, we have not enough legacy support and when you have one extension then it's probably you cannot update to latest Joomla because this extension will stop working yeah. because I think that developers of Joomla are um, 
to spending too much time polishing the code, changing some names of classes or yeah. functions, or moving from one folder to another. And those changes break them. No, uh, no sense. No uh, influence for the on user. user. Yeah. And only developers has to yeah. adjust their extensions each time the yeah. new version is. Yeah, <coughs> argue against the fact that. Well, I, whilst I do subscribe to the fact that it has no immediate effect on the end users, it will have a long-term effect. So as long as you don't overhaul your engine from time to time, it will keep running, but eventually it will yeah. fail. So okay. you can't do it one without the other, so saying that that's... So that's, that's the question I ask, right? Who are we loyal to? So I, I WordPress says we won't, you know, we are not going to improve any of our code. Yeah. But we we'll make sure the end user doesn't suffer. Drupal says the other thing. Joomla is a little confused in between. Yeah. So what Joomla tries to do is that do get rid of technical debt, but at a slower pace. Try and not break things on every minor upgrade. I hope you haven't seen like 3.5, 3.6, 3.7 things breaking. Yeah. You have? Yeah. I didn't move yet. Yeah, but I think generally between minor versions, um, the intent at least is not to break things. But between major yeah, versions, you can expect you want to release a new version with potentially this <coughs> old website that we cannot drag security fixes for those. Yeah, yeah that is old. One and five sites old. No, 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 he's talking about. No. So, so there is no, recently no. there have been cases, especially with 3.7. I think you're talking about the 3.7 scenario right now. So I think the intent is not definitely to break. Things might, you know, something might happen, but uh, the point is not to break things at all. Not between minor versions. And as far as security updates, I think you're talking about the, I think it was a scenario between 3.6.5 getting a fix versus 3.7 getting a fix. The only security fix are only for 3.7 version. Yeah, I mean, if you have 3.5, which is not the old version, then there are no security fixes. And if you build a website with that version, there is no way. Yeah, but yeah, I think if you're on 3.5, you would definitely be wanting to upgrade. So see, I think there are two problems here, right? So one thing is that we are doing updates in such a way that you will be expected to be on the latest version of the 3 series. Which means that as Joomla we should not be breaking things for the extension level. Yeah. But I think uh, a lot of those things haven't broken because uh, Joomla has changed. I mean there might be some problems on the Joomla side. But it also is a very true fact that extension developers haven't kept their code updated to the point where deprecated functions that have been deprecated for years are still being used in the code. So for example, 3.9 will finally drop a lot of the deprecated code that has been deprecated for, I don't know, two so three years. Point five or something. As old as that. So what is very important, as I said, we need to support these extension developers. We need to get them on board. But so I think if we want to like, not fight with WordPress, but to take their market, then... I don't we think we want to take their market share, very frankly, because at least that's, as I said, it's my personal uh, opinion, uh, not the project's opinion, but in my opinion, uh, so WordPress is not going to build complex things and there uh, the core management is not even a concern. In case of Joomla it definitely is. So it is something that the Joomla project will need to act on making sure that we are not technically absolute. We will want to you know, make sure that we are as up to date as we can with minimum impact on our users. But, but WordPress breaks sometimes they will. also and they yeah. affect 500,000 yeah. people or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Last year they have yeah. two or three times this yeah. So time. what we yeah. can do probably is that uh, I think we can improve our communication with extension developers, make sure that they are not keeping deprecated code in there. Uh, um, about security fixes, WordPress is supporting security fixes reports. Yeah. Uh, starting from version 3.7 and they now 4.7, so 10 versions they are yeah. supporting security fixes. But, no, but okay, but as yeah, I understand what you're advocating is saying, okay, uh, Whilst the Joomla philosophy is just be up to date with the latest version, you are saying, okay, Let's if there's something security, I want to have a updated branch for 3.5, for 3.6, for 3.7. Yeah. Uh, that's not, uh, it could be possible then just yeah. uh, commit resources to it. Uh, yeah. That's not the common denominator of the philosophy going forward. It could this. be done. Yeah. So yeah. volunteer, commit resources to it. Suggest a PLT and then maybe it's something that can happen. But at, at the moment, we are really stretched yeah. uh, with the number of people yeah. that can actually commit seriously <coughs> to those actions. Uh, so there's a lot of people working on uh, Joomla 4 now, 
so that goes at the expense of Joomla X uh, 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 or the media manager or whatever relatively major things are going on. Uh, we don't have an unlimited set of people yeah, and we don't have an unlimited cell. Joomla for I think that if this release will break most of the extensions, that it, it will be the same as with Joomla 3.0. Uh, also, but people were not moving from 2.5 because it was impossible. Yeah, but that, that's a different discussion. If we go from 2.5 to 3, then we say, okay, that with the major things we allow compatibility breaks. I think the better question would be is why did somebody, why is somebody still at 3.5 uh, whilst he could have been at 3.7? Uh, if you do it, the longer you wait, uh, the bigger the increments are, and the, yeah. the larger the chances that something goes amiss. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I always move to the logical version. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see how people yeah. have the problems. The next is actually the application yeah. and why they are. Yeah, okay, but then the question for Tom should be if somebody is still at 3.4, whatever, why did he not upgrade to 3.5 and subsequently yeah. to 3.6? But that would be the case. I know a number of answers for that. I've, I've got customers that get, got screwed over sideways yeah. because developer, uh, developers came in and said, we'll fix this for you. And they hacked the hell out of Core and they hacked the hell out of Virgimark. Yeah. And then I'm left with a mess. And they don't understand why they have to pay tons of money uh, <coughs> for me to fix things. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I just got one to the point where he now can actually click the, oh, his own button, update Joomla, and it works. Mm. He never was in that position. Yeah. But you always had to ask me to do it at a reasonable rate, but still a lot of money in the end. But you're right on that for example, you should have a way to do a mirror update or my player update. If you do a mirror update, nothing is going to change. Yeah. And you're going to do security. 